sorry for the kind of viewer. Pierre is somewhere behind me. And today's video is all about litter training. This is something that a lot of ferret owners struggle with, partially because they might not know where to start or how to start in the first place. And ferrets are very stubborn. Once they've made up their mind, they won't change it. So it's good to get in there early if possible, but it's not hopeless. You can litter train almost any ferret with time and patience. And like I said, I'm gonna go through some methods and tips and tricks that have helped me with my ferrets over the two years I've had them. <laughs> Feels like a few more than that. Oh, what have you done here? Okay, he's made the best, that's fine. Uh, so, first thing to note is that ferrets like to be able to fit their whole body into their into their litter trays. So, while you've got like with rectangular low base ones for cats, I would personally recommend um, the large corner ones that you get for rabbits. Um, I've had two, I've got a large pink one and like a smaller white one. Again, both for like rabbits or, or ferrets. Actually, one of them was had a ferret on the box. <laughs> but those ones, like I said, they are they have um they're designed to go in the corner. They have a fairly deep base, and they are high on the side that are sort of, and they attach to the cage. Which, if you have ferrets that like to dig under things, like most ferrets, means that you know they won't be able to dig under the it and go under instead. So. Those are the sort of ones I'd recommend getting for your ferrets. Like I said, most of them can clip onto a cage, but if not, it's not too difficult to get a Velcro to like, attach it to a floor or anything like that. Um, yes, yeah, so that's my first recommendation. Uh, some safe litter suggestions. Um, I would always go with paper pellets if you're using actual litter. Um, some wood ones are safe, but I just, I don't trust <laughs> wood pellets or wood shavings because they can be very irritable, very dusty and I wouldn't trust a ferret to not eat it and that would cause more issues than if they just ate a paper pellet. So yeah, I would use paper ones, so usually sort of non, the unscented and like recycled. Um, you get them in almost any pet store including like home stores as well, so that's for pellets, that's what I would suggest. Um, or I would also suggest unscented puppy pads so i mentioned in my previous the one previous videos that they are really good just to have with like whether that's your main choice of litter or as a backup you can put them in the litter tray um yes yeah, so unscented ones or reusable pads yeah Go on, this is, um yes yeah, so those are the three choices that i would recommend um if you have just adopted or taken in a ferret that has is used to a different kind of litter from their previous owner, I'm going to sneeze one moment. <coughs> oh Pierre, have you got you got the you got the hiccups? Have you got the hiccups? But yeah, if you have a ferret that has is used to a different type of litter from its previous owner, ask them what brand they have, what type. If possible, maybe you can get some from, from the previous owner, or if not, you can again figure out what brand it is and get some yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and so what you can do is you can phase the two brands out. So if you have a ferret that is used to a type of wood shavings or wood pellets, and you want to skip them onto paper pellets, they're not going to like that sudden change. Ferrets don't like change. So what you would do is you take your um, litter tray and you'd initially start with just the brand that they, they started with, the, that's in this example, the wood pellets. And then as they start using the litter tray, you slowly mix in a bit of the one that you want to use until you know, it's fully, and this could go, this could take a week, this could take a month, you don't want to rush it in case they suddenly the ferret decides actually they don't like that change, um, and so yeah, you would sl you slowly phase them out into the one that you want to use. Um, but yeah, so that's what I would do if I had a ferret from a different end because, like I said, they can be picky. They don't like change. If they're used to one thing, they don't normally like changing to another thing. And you want to, especially if you've just adopted or taken in a ferret from a rescue or previous owner. You want to make sure that the transition is as stress-free as possible. 
so phasing the two out is a good option and um yeah so for as you probably know ferrets like to go in corners and usually they will pick a corner and it's good to do this when your ferret goes into their cage for the first time they will at some point during the first 24 hours pick a corner and use it there might be two corners and usually in that case there'll be two corners next to each other rather than like a cross um, but just let them let them pick the corner and once they have you know where to put your litter tray or puppy pads or whatever you want to use um, and just to avoid any um, case of them using other corners I would put bedding, bedding that already smells of them, toys especially hanging toys or hammocks and blankets in the other corners to prevent the ferret from using those other corners um, because what's also what some ferrets will do if you haven't cleaned them out in a while I clean Pierre out daily but obviously sometimes you know things happen you might forget we might not have time to clean them out every day they may start using other corners if they feel that the corner they usually use is too dirty so just keep that in mind um, Pierre actually uses two corners um, on the short side of his cage so what I do is I just put two puppy pads down and then I mean, like the next day I just sort of wrap them up chuck them in so yeah it's let the ferret pick a corner and stop them from using the other corners and you can do this like I said through toys, bedding, hammocks, blankets and just making sure you keep on top of your cleaning sometimes they may just switch it up on you they may decide actually they want to use a different corner if so just again let them but if you don't want to make a mess you know, yeah yeah But if you would prefer them to keep using the same corner, uh, this this goes for a couple of different things. Um, if you find if you find your ferret just keeps going in different corners all the time, but hasn't picked a corner, then what you do is when they have um, what's called defecated in one corner, you pick it up with obviously with tissue <laughs> or gloves or whatever, and you put it in the litter tray or on the puppy pad in the corner you want and want, as usual the smell will and obviously seeing it there will incite the ferret to go in that corner again uh, if your ferret uses other corners of the tray or floor or whatever that you know any accidents or um, misses uh, clean it up ASAP and use enzyme you uh, use odor um, fresheners because smell is a big thing for ferrets you want to make sure they can't smell that they've been there because once they smell that they've been there they're more likely to go there again there's a um, in my game yeah, my previous video I linked to a um, stain and odor um, cleaner for pets that is really effective so I'd highly recommend that but again whatever you choose for cleaning make sure it is pet safe if your pet is going to be around it at all um what else is there yeah so ultimately the main things that you need to remember if ferrets like to go in corners they don't like change um and they don't like they just don't like transition <laughs> so they will usually pick a corner and at that point you will want to put your pads down put your litter tray in but if they decide they don't like the litter tray you know you need to put the, the mess they make back in there so they know that is where they go uh, if you find your ferret keeps digging under puppy pads, you can use. Oh my god, you're being the right little um, stress today, aren't you? If you find that your ferret keeps digging up puppy pads, you can use double sided tape to keep them down. If you find that your ferret keeps moving the litter tray, you can use Velcro, double sided tape, or you can attach. Um, you can attach it to the cage bars. Uh, to help with that 
but ultimately I will admit some ferrets maybe due to their age or their fact that they, they might have been rehomed a lot might not be able to be fully litter trained and that's okay. Pierre luckily has never had an accident outside of the cage which is good because it's carpet <laughs> and I rent but he does go in two corners in a cage and, and sometimes if he's really stressed or not stressed but if he's really annoyed at me about something he'll go upstairs as well which uh, obviously just creates more mess and ferrets will do that sometimes if they're particularly stressed or just annoyed at you they will change up a little bit um so just keep an eye on their behavior as well pierre oh my god yeah speaking of annoying he's being a little rat bag today aren't you here you are um yeah so but if ultimately if you just find that your ferret just isn't cooperating at all invest in a cage with um high a high base I sort of sort similar to this because um a two-story one with like a kit with like a, t a um tunnel that connects them that's really good for this um just you have a bed floor be complete litter there's um a couple of youtubers i've seen that do that and there's nothing wrong about it it's a bit more messy in my opinion especially if your ferret likes to kick stuff around because then the litter gets out the cage but um you know, you may find that this just suits your ferrets better. Every ferret is different. One method may not work for another. So, yes. Um, that'll be it for today because Pierre is being a, a little rat bag with the carpets. But yeah, that's all for today's video. I'm sorry if it wasn't particularly clear. My head is all over the place. But let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.